Hello and welcome to our channel guys. Today we are going to study the topic of electrophiles and nucleophiles. In this video we are only going to cover the electrophiles part. In the next video we will cover nucleophiles. There are two types of attacking reagents in chemistry. Electrophiles and nucleophiles. First, now that we are covering electrophiles, let us understand what an electrophile means. The word electrophile can be broken down into two parts, electro and philic. Electro refers to electrons and philic refers to loving. That means that any species which is electron loving will be an electrophile. As electrons are negatively charged, so obviously a species which loves negative charge will either be positively charged or they will be a neutral species. Now positive charge is quite obvious, right? Because it has a positive charge, so it will attract electrons to itself. Those neutral species which have an affinity for electron even if they are neutral. We'll study that in detail. First, positively charged electrophiles. This is quite obvious, very simple. They have a lack of electrons, so they will attract electrons and therefore they are electron loving. For example, Cl+, Br+, I+, etc. Neutral electrophiles. Now this is where you need to pay attention. Just by looking at them, you may assume that these are not electrophiles because they seem neutral. But on a closer look at the structure of these molecules, you'll understand that these are electrophiles. But how can we find out if a neutral molecule is an electrophile? To make things simple for you, we'll give you three very basic conditions. Then you'll be able to find out if a neutral molecule is an electrophile. So condition number one, if a multiple bond exists between non-similar atoms, then it can be an electrophile. For example, carbon dioxide, CO2. There is a multiple bond between carbon and oxygen which are non-similar atoms and so CO2 is an electrophile. Similarly SO2. Multiple bonds between sulfur and oxygen so SO2 is an electrophile. The same case with SO3. Multiple bonds between sulfur and oxygen so again SO3 is an electrophile. Pretty simple. The second condition can be if on making the structure we see that the octate is not complete then it is an electrophile. Why? Because we all know that when the octate for a molecule is complete, that means it is in its most stable stage. But when the octate is incomplete, the central atom is looking for electrons to complete its octate, right? To achieve that stability. And since it is looking for electrons, so it is electron loving, that is an electrophile. Let's look at examples. AlCl3. Al has three electrons in its outermost shell, which it forms covalent bonds with chlorine. And so, 3 plus 3, it now has six electrons in its outermost shell, which is less than eight. So, the octate for aluminium in AlCl3 is not complete. And therefore, it is an electrophile. Similarly, for BeCl2, Be has two electrons in its outermost shell, and it forms covalent bonds with two atoms of chlorine. Thus, it has four electrons now in its outermost shell and the octate is not complete, so BeCl2 is also an electrophile. The third condition and actually the most important condition is even if the octate is complete but the central atom still contains vacant d orbitals, then it is an electrophile. Now this can be very confusing for a lot of students. How do we know if the central atom has vacant d orbitals? We'll make this very simple for you. We'll explain this in detail, thoroughly. How can you find out if the central atom has vacant d orbitals in a very simple manner? We'll understand this through examples. The first example we take is PCl5. Okay, the octate for phosphorus in PCl5 is complete. The atomic number for phosphorus is 15. And the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3, 4s0, 3d0. So when you actually add up the superscript numbers, because they represent electrons, so the sum of those numbers should be equal to the atomic number of phosphorus, which is 15. 
also the coefficients of s p d f these are called the principal quantum number so now how do you find out if p in pcl5 has vacant the orbital very simple the last electron of phosphorus has entered which orbital 3p as you can see after that there are no electrons in any other orbitals so the last electron of phosphorus has entered 3p so therefore the principal quantum number is 3 so after 3p in which the last electron of phosphorus entered which is the next d orbital 3d right so the next d orbital is 3d and the principal quantum number is 3 the last electron of phosphorus has entered 3p therefore principal quantum number is equal to 3 the next d orbital after 3p is 3d and the principal quantum number of that is 3 again also the next d orbital which is 3d is empty that is it has zero electrons therefore as principal quantum number of last electron entered is equal to principal quantum number of the next d orbital and that next d orbital is empty therefore we can say phosphorus in pcl5 has vacant d orbitals and therefore pcl5 is an electrophile because phosphorus in pcl5 has a vacant d orbital so what have we learned so far let's write down the two conditions which i just mentioned to you in that example two conditions for identifying if central molecule has vacant d orbital are principal quantum number of the orbital in which the last electron entered should be equal to the principal quantum number of the next d orbital next d orbital means the d orbital which comes after the orbital in which the last electron entered so the last electron entered in 3p in pcl5 and the next d orbital after 3p was 3d so the principal quantum number of 3p and 3d should be same which is actually same 3 and 3 so the first condition was satisfied in pcl5 the second condition is that next d orbital which we were talking about should be empty that is it should have zero electrons in it now if these two conditions are satisfied then we can say that that atom has vacant d orbitals in that molecule so now we'll take the second example and i want you guys to solve it try to solve this question by yourself ncl3 is this an electrophile now as we can see the octet for ncl3 is complete because n has 5 electrons in its outermost shell and it takes 3 electrons from chlorine so the octet for ncl3 is complete then we have to make the electronic configuration of nitrogen in ncl3 atomic number of nitrogen is 7 so the electronic configuration will be 1s2 2s2 2p3 3s0 3p0 4s0 3d0 The sum of electrons again should be equal to the atomic number which is 2 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 7. The principal quantum number of the last electron entered is 2 because it, the last electron enters 2p. The principal quantum number of the next d orbital after 2p is 3d. So the principal quantum number is 3. As 2 is not equal to 3 because we told you that the condition is these two principal quantum numbers should be equal and the same so even though the 3d orbital is empty we cannot say that nitrogen in ncl3 has vacant d orbital i hope this concept is clear to you now in case you have any doubts you can ask them in the comments below now we move on to a very important point which is target star point as you know these are really important points and you can rarely find them in a lot of books Okay so cation carriers and oxidizing agents are also electrophilic reagents you need to remember this now a quick revision there are two types of attacking reagents electrophiles and nucleophiles electrophiles are electron loving and they can be positively charged as well as neutral species positively charged electrophiles are very easy to identify neutral species how can you find out if a neutral molecule is an electrophile by three simple conditions Firstly, if multiple bond exists between non-similar atoms, then it is an electrophile. Secondly, if on making the structure you find out that the octet is not complete, then it is an electrophile. 
and thirdly if the octet is complete but the central atom still contains vacant d orbitals then it is an electrophile how to find out if an atom contains vacant d orbitals very simple conditions we've told you congratulations guys lesson complete we hope we could solve your queries about electrophiles in this video in the next video we'll cover nucleophiles if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to our channel also click that little notification bell so that whenever we upload a video you get a notification about it thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time bye bye